great pleasure this evening that I'd like to introduce our seminar speaker, um, Dr. Burke Hales. Uh, Dr. Hales is an associate professor um, in the College of Oceanographic and Atmospheric Sciences at the Oregon State University. Um, he's a chemical oceanographer and he got his start in um, chemical oceanography at the University of Washington, that's where he got his bachelor's. Uh, he must have liked it very much there because he stayed on both for his master's and for his PhD. Um, he then went on to do postdoctoral positions and now he has his position at the uh, Oregon State University. Um, his research is uh, diverse, but it really centers around the dynamics of nutrients and carbon in the ocean. And Dr. Hales was a participant in the 2007 study that looked at the carbon cycle uh, along the west coast off of our shores in down into California and Washington, up into Washington. And during that investigation, scientists discovered that water that upwells along our coastline is growing increasingly acidic. Um, and this evening, Dr. Hales uh, will talk about his research and the implications of his findings. Um, and his talk is titled Acidification, Carbon Fluxes and Hypoxia, Lessons from Carbon Cycle Studies and Oregon Coastal Waters. I'm pleased to meet you, Dr. Hales, and thank you very much for coming. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I've not been here before. It's, uh, it's really a beautiful spot. I'm, uh, very impressed you guys are lucky to spend the summer here. I'm, I'm also uh, pleased to see uh, Coral here. Um, he was a graduate at Oregon State University and, and is living proof that despite what all you University of Oregon folks say, that OSU graduates can in fact get jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to apologize. I, I came down yesterday and forgot my razor, which I thought was a bad thing until I saw that horribly outdated picture that was on the posters. And so maybe that will help you recognize me because I, I don't think I look too much the same except for the three-day stubble. <laughs> Okay, so, so uh, I, I'm going to talk today about uh, carbon cycle science, which, um, you know, because that's what I do, I think that's what really, you know, sort of is the answer to life, universe, and everything. Um, and, and really, carbon fluxes or carbon cycle science is, is about as integrative and interdisciplinary as you can possibly get. And, and uh, um, it, it's, it's a great field to be in right now because it's, it's uh, lots of very important relevant issues are happening in, in carbon cycle science, particularly in the ocean. Uh, but it's also nice because you, you, don't, you don't ever get buttonholed and, and, uh, in the study in a very narrow field and, and you have to at least try to understand at least superficially, and I'll give you evidence of the superficiality here as I progress in this talk. Uh, you have to understand a lot of different aspects about what's happening in the ocean because carbon cycle science is a system level uh, uh, topic. You, you can't focus in very narrowly. Uh, and a few clarifications here. Um, I, I said this is about studies of Oregon coastal waters, and, and it, that's true. That's where most of the data, uh, if not well, most of the data I'm going to show you is, was collected. Uh, but I really think this is generalizable to what I'd call the upwelling Cascadia margin, so sort of from Cape Mendocino in northern California up to, oh, probably the <coughs> probably the, the middle or northern end of Vancouver uh, Island. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to put any names on this, including my own, because the number of people that are involved in this work uh, is, is huge, uh, directly and indirectly, and, and um, you know, I, I have several slides if I really gave everybody due credit, so please just accept that there are lots and lots of people whose work I'm, I'm depending on to, uh, to present this, and, and, uh, <coughs> and now, you know, this is, uh, you know, the, the sort of vision of what oceanographers do is you, know, you put on a, a, a beret and you, you sing songs in French and you talk about the beauty of dolphins. And, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the, the field is populated with nerves and, and uh, <laughs> ocean acidification is, is, is sort of the revenge of the nerves and that you have to, you really have to get into these kind of obnoxious freshman chemistry level uh, issues that you thought you were never going to have to think about again. And, and, you really have to do some background. So I'm going to break this talk up into, into three parts. Um, and the first is going to be this sort of background. And just to remind you that what we're talking about really here is ocean acid-based chemistry, acid-based chemistry, and, uh, and pH, because pH is what people usually talk about when they talk about acidification or, or acid-based balance. And pH, uh, the lowercase italicized P is an operator that means the negative log 10 of whatever follows that. And in this case, it's the hydrogen ion. 
positive hydrogen ion concentration. Acids produce hydrogen ion. Okay, hydrogen ion, when you stick it in here, in the negative sign, pH goes down when hydrogen ions go up. Right? Increased acidity is increased hydrogen ion. Increased hydrogen ion causes low pH. Right? Things that are acidic have low pH, things that are basic have high pH. Uh, it's a log scale, so don't get fooled by small number changes in pH because one unit change in pH is a ten, factor of 10 change in hydrogen ion concentration. And then I'm just going to say right up front, pH is really kind of a horrible way to look at ocean acid-based chemistry, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But it's hard to get away from it because it's so ingrained in how we think about this. Okay. I like to say the basics are that the ocean is a little bit basic, right? And the ocean pH is about 8. You remember the pH, neutral pH is pH of 7, okay? So why is, why is seawater pH a little bit on the basic side of things? Well, it has to do with some very fundamental Ocean 101 kinds of things about why seawater is salty. If you take the things that we think about as being typical components of the salt in seawater, in a kilogram of seawater, most of it is uh, chloride and sodium, table salt, okay? And then there's a lot of other things in there in, in decreasing concentration, sulfate, magnesium, uh, calcium, potassium, uh, and, and the bicarbonate is a little bit of a special case in that all of these other things have no acid-based reactivity in seawater. Okay, so they're what we call mineral ions. <coughs> and if you take the concentrations of all of these, the charged concentrations of all of these, it turns out that you come up with an imbalance that would suggest that seawater actually has a charge. You know, you poke your finger and you get a little shock. And of course that doesn't happen. And what meets this balance are these ions that actually have acid-based chemistry, acid-based reactivity. Um, and it turns out that they're about 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 equivalents per liter or per kilogram of seawater. And this is the alkalinity of seawater, and that's what provides the buffering capacity of seawater. Seawater is actually fairly well buffered. You can add some acid or some base to seawater, and its pH won't change as much as a, as a solution that's not as strongly buffered. Okay, so stepping back one more layer, why is the ocean so alkaline? And that has to do with salts in the sea that come from weathering of newly formed rocks. And we call these primary minerals, um, which are, you know, freshly formed basalts and, and things like that that haven't been weathered very much. And acidic gases that are released from this rock formation. So these are, you know, this is why volcanoes are what matters most. You probably didn't know that, but, you know, volcanoes are setting the table. There. So essentially you have these basic rocks. Uh, plus some water, plus these acidic gases, sulfur and dioxide, hydrogen, hydrogen chloride acid, or hydrogen chloride and gases form or carbon dioxide. And these reactions release these anions, chloride, sulfate, bicarbonate, and the cations that you're familiar with that make up seawater. And finally, weathered rocks, okay? <clears throat> and the net effect of that is that this whole weathering cycle, now this is, we're talking very, very long time scales here because we're talking plate tectonics. You form new crust in here, and in here, the plates collide, slide over the top of each other, causes volcanic activity, right? The hydrologic cycle comes into play, weathering happens with the rocks, the rivers pick up the signature of these rocks, they get into the ocean, water evaporates from the ocean without the minerals, and you turn the ocean salty and slightly basic, okay? 